To be quite honest, I'm a little terrified of this. Okay, so this video is very special to me. My channel has finally reached a big milestone of 1,000 subscribers. So to celebrate this big milestone, I figured the best thing to do was to, you know, why not try a puzzle count that I haven't tried before? Now hit the like button if you're a fan of large count puzzles. And let me know down below, what is the biggest puzzle count you've ever completed? And yeah, you're probably thinking you could have just done a thousand pieces, but I've done a ton of those. We have to step it up this time. Why not attempt the set with the highest puzzle count that I've ever done? And it makes sense too, because 1,500 would pretty much be my next milestone. So the puzzle that you guys picked for this video is the Disney Classics. Again, it is 1,500 pieces and it is 31.5 by 24 inches when it's completed. Now that I think about it, I do hope this fits on my puzzle table. I have to measure it, but I'm pretty sure it will. But anyways, this one is by Seiko. Yes, I know, Seiko is not my absolute favorite brand in terms of quality, but again, look at this image. For one, it's Disney, my absolute favorite kind of image. And it's a picture frame with scenes from all the Disney classic movies. Just about most of my favorite Disney movies here. We have Alice, Cinderella, Peter Pan, Snow White. This is too much fun. Quite honestly, I think you guys picked the best one to celebrate my milestone because it's a little bit of everything. And to me, Disney is kind of the best way to celebrate anything. Now, yes, yeah, Seiko is not the greatest when it comes to quality, but I mean, you do get fantastic images and they do come with the poster, which is another great perk. And you know what I realized? I haven't done a Seiko puzzle in the longest now. So you know what? I'm kind of looking forward to opening this up and kind of getting a feel again on what these pieces are going to feel like. How is it going to fit? I mean, I know it's not going to fit great, but you know what I mean? It's been a while. So it'd be kind of nice to jump back into this and kind of get a feel again of how well, I guess not great it is, but yeah, I mean, the image again is beautiful. To be quite honest, I'm a little terrified of this. Not only because we have 1,500 pieces, but you know, we do have a lot of things going on in this image. I kind of feel like the frame areas, the gold frame is going to probably be the most tricky to put together. And again, it really depends on how big these pieces are and how much detail is within that piece. But who knows, it might be fairly simple, I don't know. But I feel like I can pretty much make out the different scenes and kind of be able to sort those out pretty easily. But again, this is 1500 pieces. I've, I've never done this. I don't know how overwhelmed I'm gonna feel when I put the pile on my table. And you know, am I gonna go blank like I always do when it comes to sorting? I don't know. How long is this gonna take me? I haven't a clue. You know, this this might not take me very long or by the time I'm done, I might actually reach 1500. I don't know, Pro probably not likely, but we'll see, right? But anyways, enough of that. Let's stop beating around the bush. Let's open this up and let's get started. All right, let's open this big boy up. So this box has two pieces of tape on either side. So let's cut that very carefully. Oh. That was stupid of me. All right, so like all Seiko puzzles, we do have our lovely poster, which is a very nice addition. Look at that. And that's a very good size reference image as well. Yeah, Seiko might not be the best quality, but at least they give you a poster. And here are the pieces, <laughs> oh my goodness. As you can see here, the bag itself does have some puzzle dust on it. Um, I don't know. It does seem like quite a lot. I'm contemplating now if I dump this on my table or in the box. Anyways, let's open this up. Now, looking at these pieces, they kind of look smaller than what I'm used to with Seiko. Now I feel like I gotta pull one of my other ones and see what the puzzle piece size looks like. Now judging by the pieces from the smaller count Seiko puzzles, they look like there is a size difference with them. If I can finally get this bag open. 
So that's your 750 piece size, and this is your 1500 piece size. It seems like with Tico, the bigger the count is of the set, the smaller the pieces are. So this is gonna be interesting because this makes me wonder now if the fit is gonna be different, if like the hold itself is gonna be different compared to what I am typically used to with Seiko. I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that with it being a smaller piece, I mean, will it fit nicer together? Will it crumble instantly if you look at it? I don't know. This is gonna be quite an adventure. Probably a long one too. Now the pieces themselves do feel pretty strong, which is nice. The tabs aren't very like long or elongated. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much about those having little accidents, you know, as long as you're not a beast like me. And the colors are, are quite nice. They're pretty vibrant, but I am noticing quite a bit of blurriness with this image. It's not, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell on video because I'm looking at the camera right now and it looks very clear, but it's actually slightly blurry in person. Really, it's it's not the most crisp looking image. It's, it's slightly on the blurry side, but you know, it's okay. You can still make out what you're working with here and what the details are, but um, this is gonna be interesting. Oh, look. So there is quite a bit of glare on these pieces, which is, I've, if I remember correctly, quite typical of Seiko puzzles. So just be careful where your light is coming from when you're working on it. But you know what, enough is enough. I wanna finally be able to say that I've accomplished putting together a 1500 piece set. So you know what, let's get started. Anyways, the first tray I did the edge pieces, which is all frame. The next two trays here, this was tricky, but what I basically did was I did all the pieces that were just solid frame, you know, with pretty much nothing else in them. And then this tray is also pieces with the frame, but as you can see, it kind of has like half frame, half detail in them. And then for this tray here, I mean, I don't know, I think because the red just stood out to me so much that I figured I'll just pull all those out. Um, there was really no other reason aside from that. Uh, let's see, then these two here are basically pieces where I could make out what was actually going on in them in terms of the detail. So I have pieces here with characters and as you can see, eyes and faces and whatnot. And I tried to pile them according to the movie. I did my best, but to be honest, this, this isn't a, a very good sort here. And this is even worse here because these two trays basically contain pieces that are either just kind of like a solid color or mainly, I figured these would be like whatever's in the background of the images. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, pretty much, I, I have no idea what I did here. I just kind of just put these to the side and figured what I can do is take a tray at a time, resort it, and figure it out from there. What I did in this box is basically pull out all these light blue pieces, which look to be part of Cinderella's dress and kind of like her circle, her frame. So yeah, I did that as well. Um, honestly, I figured this was really the best I could do. And this was really tedious to try to sort because it just seemed like the pile was never getting smaller. I know I'm gonna have to resort each of these trays to kind of like make it a little easier and who knows, we'll see. Honestly, I, I don't really know what I did for most of these trays, but hopefully this works out. So let's continue. So this time I decided to not start with the edge pieces because well, you saw how crazy that tray looked. Instead, I started piecing together the scenes with the characters, and for the most part, it was pretty straightforward. Yes, yeah, some areas were tricky because it was a bit difficult to make out some of the details, but it could have been a lot worse. Kind of like the frame itself. So I was able to complete the majority of the scenes in the initial stages of the completion process. Once I did that, I started to fill in the areas around each scene with some framing. And what I felt was key in this whole completion process, to me, was sorting. Okay, so I've taken the tray with the big pile of like the half frame and half of whatever else pieces and I kind of broke it up into little piles that were basically 
pieces that belong with each other. So on this tray here, I've broken this up into little piles according to areas on kind of from the center to the right side of the box. So I have, for example, anything that to me resembled the Mickey area is kind of up here. We have Aristocats in this pile. The middle one here would be Alice in Wonderland. Lady and the Tramp is on the side here and kind of like goes in that order according to their placement on the box. And then on this tray here, I basically did the same thing with the pieces that belong to the left side here. So everything is kind of like an order. Is it going to stay like that? Probably not, but I'm going to do my best so that it does. Let's continue. Now Seiko is not really known for top quality puzzle sets. So I wasn't surprised to find some frayed tabs and peeled images on several of my pieces. Could it even been maybe five? I didn't exactly count. And yes, the image print I found was a bit on the blurry side, which made it hard at times to make out certain details. And glare was a beast, which is also quite a common issue with Seiko sets. But what really, and I mean really surprised me, was the fit. So as I was waiting for my daughter to go to bed the other night, I decided to pull the bottom box with the pieces for Cinderella that I had set aside and pretty much started working on it. So I didn't actually film it, but I want to show you the progress that I made on it so far. It took me about, I would say 15, 20 minutes, maybe even less actually. It was pretty easy, but let me show you what I did so far. What I basically did was I tried to make, you know, kind of line up the pieces so that I can follow this line pattern going down on each piece. So with that in place, that, that kind of made it much easier to kind of figure out where exactly they went, especially with these little yellow stars here. That helped a lot as well. And I kind of have like an arm here, another arm there, and some other pieces that I need to put together. Oh, here's her face as well. By the way, I have a lot to say about this kind of fit here. This is a quite surprising. But anyways, what I want to do next is get this clump here down on my table over there and kind of start, you know, laying things out properly and start figuring out exactly where everything is meant to be. So let's continue. In all my past experiences with Seiko, I've always struggled with what I call popping pieces. I hated it, it drove me crazy. But this was different. The pieces slid right in and stayed together. And can you believe the sections held together? I was like, is this for real? What's going on here? This is Seiko, right? I was shocked. Now these pieces were smaller and thicker compared to the lower count sets from Seiko, even compared to the 1000 piece sets, which I know for a fact because that was the last Seiko that I worked on, which was the Cinderella Christmas puzzle that I did back in December, and the hold was non-existent. I suffered when I failed to save that one because it just crumbled. Now if this 1500 piece set actually passes the standing test, well then, I will have big plans for this one once it's completed. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but I hate when I have pieces where like I can't for the life of me figure out where they're meant to go. And I've had this set up like this for like two days now and I still couldn't figure it out until now. For a minute, I thought it was trees, but it's actually the Mad Hatter's ear. There we go. And like once I put it in, it's like, why didn't I realize this before? Anyways, let's move on. Again, we have all of our edges pieces here already. So this is gonna be like the absolute last thing that I do for this puzzle. So the only tray that I have left here is the tray with basically the borders and frames. So it looks like we have a few different patterns going on here. So we are gonna resort this tray. Again, I'm finding more pieces that I know pretty much where they're gonna go pretty easily. We have this pattern, we have one with kind of this beaded design. And then of course we have the ones with kind of like the rounded frame design. So we're gonna separate those as well to kind of help us 
out a bit. That's an edge piece, that don't belong there. And once we resort these trays to kind of like have these separate little groups here, I'm probably, if I have a hard time trying to figure out where they go exactly, I may just lay them out by shape because I know that helped me in my last Disney puzzle to get it done much quicker towards the end. So we'll probably do that as well. And then we shall hopefully be done with this very quickly. What's this one? I'm getting close to the end now, but I can't seem to figure out where this piece is. I still have another two trays that have pieces in them, but I was pretty sure I sorted through all of them already and I don't remember spotting this. So let's hope um, that's not missing. All right, let's continue. And I had about three more instances where I thought I was missing pieces and I was freaking out because I was so close to the end, but thankfully it was all good. Well, I've just spent 30 minutes trying to look for this piece and uh, look where I found it. Now this must have ended up here when I emptied the bag for my shorts video for YouTube. So thank goodness. I found a lot of dust in the process too, but never mind that. Anyways, there we go. Whew, that scared me. All right, let's move on. I struggled putting together Lady and the Tramp for some reason, but nothing beat putting the frame together. That frame was the hardest part of this puzzle. I had to walk away several times to help reset my brain and my eyeballs because all the pieces just looked the same after a point. I got so desperate and I was on a mission to finish it in the end. So much so that on the final night I was up real late because the next day was the start of my work week and I knew I would struggle to find extra time to finally finish it. puzzle took me about 10 hours to complete and I knew it would take me long but that's okay it doesn't matter I savored every moment it was tough in the end but my goodness this was a blast to work on I absolutely love this image it has a little bit of everything that I love about Disney and I got an immense feeling of accomplishment because I finally worked on my biggest puzzle count yet Thank you for picking this one for me, guys. It was perfect. And hey, I gotta give Seiko some credit for the fit on this set. I guess it's best to go with one of their much bigger puzzle count sets, which is great, really, because you'd hope something this big will hold after spending so much time on it. I am definitely looking forward to working on another much larger puzzle count in the future. Anyways, if you'd like to tag along with me on my other puzzle adventures, be sure to subscribe if you're new here. Well guys, hope you're all doing well. Thank you again for all your support and I will see you in the next one.